Excellent. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, it's good. so good morning. to be hanging out with you guys. I just, I want to just take a moment to drop in and introduce the amazing brother that I'm blessed to have in this lifetime, soul brother, not blood brother. His name is John Croft, and he is the reason why we all have this amazing book. And for those that don't have it yet, you're going to want it by the end of this. This is probably one of very few books where you can dive into and really connect with the essence of and spirit of what has been labeled as superfoods or for us, food as medicine. This is entering into that deep state of, okay, what do I need? And finding a beautiful delivery system for it. So yes, there's a lot of playfulness with cacao, of course. But there's also some smoothies and ways to bring this magic into your life in other ways, right? There's ice creams, which are dairy-free. So the other today. thing, pardon? I'm making that today. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. We've got lots of goodness for you. So the other thing I just want to say is as we journey this together today, obviously we don't have smell of vision and we don't have taste of vision. So just drop into that place of really connecting with the deliciousness and that transmission of deliciousness that all of this yummy food is going to bring. We're going to have a beautiful play with you. John's going to be demonstrating all of his recipes. I'm going to be here to answer questions and let's get to it. Let's start this beautiful journey. John, do you want to tell us, begin by telling us Absolutely. how your journey with cacao began yep. and why you love it so much? Why is cacao so amazing for us? and how this book came to be, just so that we have some background. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, there's the book, as Vanessa held up before. It's my proud little baby that came, came into this world about a year and a half ago. So it actually happens to be that this beautiful Vanessa, who was on the call with us today, she is my cacao muse. I thought I knew a lot about chocolate eight years ago, and I was eating a lot of, um, you know, still good store-bought chocolate, but I didn't really know the benefits and the incredible feeling that raw cacao would give me. So I went to one of her very, very, very first classes. It would have been at least eight years ago. And she gave me the first taste of this thing called raw cacao. So I'm, I'm a bit of a researcher. I love to, you know, dive deep into finding out how foods work within the body and, you know, what cacao does to you and what happens when you incorporate this superfood with cacao. And it just, it just took me on this hungry journey from that little humble class I went to, to creating, researching, thinking of different ways that I could incorporate all these yummy superfoods into raw cacao. So firstly, there's a huge, huge, huge difference to the store-bought stuff that you get, okay, the, the normal chocolate. For one, it's probably usually cocoa, which sort of sounds like cacao, but they're the same letters, they're just mixed around in a different way. So cocoa and cacao. If you wanna go on a journey, get some raw cacao. You can get that from you know, most health food shops or Amazon or your um, Whole Foods has that. Um, for me, it's all about South American. I think South America holds some magnificent secrets in terms of food as medicine, as Vanessa beautifully put it. We're both very much into food as medicine. So when you, when you source something from South America, it just has all that really good juju in it. It's got the altitude, it's got the rainfall, it's got the soil, it's got all this wonderful things going for it. Hence, I believe um, South American cacao is, is my, my one of choice. Second thing you wanna look for is organic. And the third is whether it's sustainable. So I just go for Peruvian, organic and sustainable. You can't go wrong. So cacao in a nutshell, I could talk the whole webinar on cacao, but I can't, I've got to get cooking soon or rocking as we call it. Cacao has got a lot of medicinal properties and alchemical properties to it. And a few of them are that when you eat raw cacao without all the sugars and without all the milk and without all the soya lecithin and all the additives and other stuff that store-bought chocolate has, when you indulge in pure raw cacao, it actually releases serotonin in your brain. It releases dopamine. It releases a chemical called anandamide, which actually, which actually makes you feel blissed out. So whenever you eat cacao and you can have it in higher quantities, it actually gives you a little bit of a buzz. 
in a nice way. It makes you feel very euphoric and very warm and very lovey and yummy. So, you know, getting, getting back to South America, where I love to source my cacao from, a lot of superfoods that appear in my book actually come from South America too. So, you know, I play around with um, maca, which we're using today in a recipe. I play around with lucuma, which I'm using in another recipe. But there's actually, I think it was 19 in total uh, in my book that I incorporate. And let's not forget the oils, yo. I was introduced to doTERRA about six years ago and it literally changed my life. I'd always been into using essential oils. I love, love, love them for 30 or 35 years I've been using oils. But we all know there's nothing like doTERRA. The quality, the purity, like, wow. So when I started to play around with the chocolate and then the superfoods and the oils came along about six years ago, that was just like my trifecta. So it was like I had the medicinal benefits of cacao here. I had the incredible medicinal antioxidative properties of the superfoods here. And then when the oils came, it was like, wow, you mean I can have you know, immune support? I can have digestive support. I can have brain support, gut support. So this is what made me go, right, I'm going to teach this. So I started to have classes about five years ago. Every Friday, people would come hungrily waiting. What's he going to create? What's he going to make? And I used to just have single sheets to give people, like, you know, pieces of paper for them to take home. And, you know, week after week after week, people kept saying, you need to make a book. And I said, you need to shut up because that's just too hard. <laughs> um, and then, you know, they kept saying, no, no, seriously, these are very unique beautiful recipes, can you put them together as a book? And I really thought about that and went, well, I need to give a gift to the world. And although it was challenging and though it was, you know, probably one of the hardest, not hardest, one of the most challenging things I would say I've, I've done to date, but I'm very, very proud that I did. So 50 recipes, I refer to them pretty much, you know, every single day. So I hope that you find some inspiration today. I'm going to tease you how Vanessa said, you know, you wish this was smell of vision and you wish this was taste of vision because I'm going to show you the four recipes that I pre-made and then I'm just going to you know, get to them and, and show you how easy it is to make. So this first one here, you can see this is a tangerine mousse. So this is a totally dairy-free mousse. This is using coconut cream and it sets, it actually sets. I was really surprised that coconut cream, which I'll be demonstrating today, when you whip it with the beaters, use the old, old, old school you know, hand beaters, it actually thickens like cream. A bit of salt in there, a bit of tangerine, a bit of maple syrup, you know, it's, it, I'll tell you, I'll show you what I'm putting in it, but it whips and it thickens. So that is a beautiful dairy-free alternative for like your mousses that you would traditionally make with cream, which is, uh, makes you feel thick and, um, you know, not, not very good. The second one is I want to showcase fennel because a lot of people don't really use fennel in a savoury way. So this is a sea salt, this is roasted sesame seed, and this is um, fennel oil. So the salt, the roasted flavour and the you know, maple syrup and also the fennel just come through. That's really unusual and beautiful. One of my most requested. And this puppy, this is probably one of everyone's favourites. Can you see that glistening honey goodness? If you're a vegan, you don't have to use the honey. Some of my recipes actually do have honey in them. But if you want to swap that out for maple syrup, it will caramelize just fine as well. So this is a four nut concoction. I dry roast them, which I've done already because that can take a while. So I've got them pre-prepared and ready. And then you make up a chocolate mix. This has got cardamom in it. So cardamom is one of the most beautiful spices it really blends nicely with chocolate and a bit of that sea salt taste and once the nuts are caramelized i put uh, raw honey in there and just let them um, sorry once the nuts are roasted rather i put the honey over it to let them caramelize and set like a toffee and then i pour the chocolate over the top oh my gosh so that's probably one of my most requested and the last one i didn't really want to plate this up because it could get a bit messy but this is dairy free ice cream made from bananas, y'all, right? Banana and peanut butter, cinnamon ice cream. Keep it in the freezer, keep it in the fridge. It is so delicious. It is so, so, so delicious. So I'm gonna put these to the side just for a second, and I'm gonna get straight into showing you how to make raw chocolate. I've got two methods to show you today um, of how to make raw chocolate, okay? 
there's a little gadget that we have, Vanessa and I own, and we love, we're in love, Americans, I'm not too sure if there's many Americans on the call today and Canadians or whoever. This is the one half of the Thermomix. So this is the machine that literally changed our lives. It does, hey, there's Noel, hey Noel. <laughs> He's putting the chocolate back in the fridge so we can eat it later. Sorry, not sorry. So this little machine, it's, it's an investment. It's a, you know, it is quite a cash investment at the beginning. However, you can do soups in this, you can do dips in this, you can do chocolate in this, you can mill flour, it does everything. So this, I'm using this to melt chocolate initially, and then I'm going to show you a double boiler method, which is steam, steam method, okay? So, but what I'm going to do first is, I'm going to melt, we've got a product called cacao butter. So I'm doing the cardamom chocolate first. So this is cacao butter, all right? This is what makes chocolate, when I, I'll hold up a few pieces for you, that's what makes chocolate set hard like a snap, like a snap hard chocolate. It smells incredible, it's really beautiful and chocolatey, like the smell, the aroma is just fantastic. However, if you were to nibble like on one of these, it would taste, or it does taste like, because I've tried it, it um, tastes like wax, tastes like candle wax, it's not nice. You need the maple or you need the honey to kind of get that that sweetness into it. So I'm going to be putting in um, about a cup of the um, cacao butter here because for these recipes to work, for your hard chocolates to work, you need the fats in it. So I'm also using coconut oil, right, which is right here too, which I pre-melted because it's already cold over here in Western Australia and my coconut oil went to liquid. Uh, so it's gone to uh, solidified, so I've actually... Um, they go on to uh, just melt that into in some hot water, not too hot water, but just a bit. So you need the coconut oil and you need the uh, cacao butter to liquefy for this recipe to work, right? So what I thought I would do, because it's going to be a pretty boring five minutes or six minutes just waiting for that to happen, I'm going to get this on and then I'm going to show you straight away how to whip the coconut cream and get that happening, okay? So I'm just gonna go up over here for a second and click this in and get it doing its thing. Hopefully it won't be too noisy. And that'll take about, yeah, about six minutes, I think. Hopefully it's not too noisy. So, here we go. You will need one of these guys. Haven't seen one of these for a while. <laughs> Look, you probably could do this in the Thermomix, but um, I, I don't wanna really do that. I'd rather just use, this does a good job. I still whip cream like this if I use cream. This is a good old school thing. So the trick that I found was with coconut cream, so there's my coconut cream there, right? I found that keeping this in the refrigerator allows all that fat from the coconut cream to actually rise to the top. So then when you want to use it, you can just scoop out that top section and you can, you know, kind of continue on that way, which is good. Put it into a bowl and give it a whip. So just turn into my recipe. So there you go. That's what it looks like. Yum! Very proud of the photos too. They turned out beautifully. So, simply grab yourself a bowl while that chocolate is melting. Get a spoon so you don't break your finger on the top of the thing. And you'll see that this coconut cream has risen to the top and it's got a nice thick um, skin on it. So we're going to do about, probably, you're going to leave about a quarter in there. I choose to use a spoon because there will be a bit of liquid at the bottom. So I tend to just, you know, do big dollops and tablespoons each time until I've got about a quarter of the tin left because the quarter of the tin is going to go in the ice cream, the dairy-free banana ice cream. And my bananas are in the freezer too, just a little tip. So my bananas are hanging out in the freezer until I need them. That's recipe four, so that won't be, won't be um, a while yet. So, so look, my, while I'm getting this out, a lot of my inspiration for these recipes to go right back was to, you know, I'm, I'm not vegetarian, I'm not vegan, I'm not perfect. I, I enjoy an espresso martini and a glass of wine like anyone else. Um, however, when it comes to snacking, when it comes to eating foods, I really cannot put... I mean, I, I, I try to eat very healthily. I do have a lot of superfoods in my diet. But I do like to um, 
you know, eat on highly nutritious foods. I like to snack on things that are going to make me feel good, that are going to have good, you know, low GI, not loaded with sugars and fats. So this is what kind of led me down the path to, you know, to, to find foods that are beautiful and tasty, but they're kind of like, it's a bit like you're eating medicine, which is, which is exciting because you think it's naughty, but it's actually not naughty at all. So, yes. So look, this recipe here, I've just put in nearly the whole tin of the coconut cream. I'm going to be putting in a little trick here I've learned. You see in my recipe, it's actually called coconut butter. Now, I went out and used to, I used to buy this stuff, and it's not cheap. You want to know how you can make your own? I learned this one. It's very, very easy. If you get a, if you, even if you don't have a Thermomix, you have like a, um, a food processor with, you know, good, strong blades, you get about two cups of dry co coconut flakes, so desiccated, shredded coconut. Chuck it in your, your food processor. And you just keep blending it and keep blending it and keep blending it. You may think nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden, the fats come out of it and it starts to stick to the sides. So stop it, scrape down the sides, flick it in closer to the blades again, give it another few more, repeat, 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 repeat. And eventually, all that fat and all that oil comes out of the, uh, you know, the coconut and you end up with something called coconut butter. So this is yummy to add to like stews, to curries, to thicken up, because um, I'm using this as the uh, tangerine mousse. It's, it's a bit of an extra thickener, okay? So I'm actually putting in one tablespoon of um, the coconut butter. And again, because it was cold this morning, it set really hard, so I had to just lay it in some hot water for it to, for it to melt. So I'm sticking that in. This is so easy. Seriously, so, so easy. And the taste is just to die for. It's really yummy. Because it's just not all that fat and all that cream, you know, that you have when you have a traditional um, mousse. I'm putting in one tablespoon of raw honey. So let's use that tablespoon here. Yeah. I always try to, I'll talk a little bit more of this as well when I come to caramelise the nuts, but I tend to not buy a lot of store-bought supermarket um, honey because they do a lot of things to it. If you are a honey eater, try to local, uh, try to source a local apiarist. You know, get a local a local guy or a local um, beekeeper, and then you'll you'll know that your honey is going to be good from there. So I, I tend to never ever buy supermarket bought honey. It's just I just don't know what they do to it, and I don't I don't really trust it so much. Um, I'm going to be putting in four tablespoons of cacao butter. So you can see, uh, sorry, powder. You can see that I buy my, um, my cacao powder in small amounts. <laughs> this is half of it. You should see my pantry. So four, I think four is enough because otherwise it can, you know, if you're really, really chocolatey, you can put maybe six in, or if you're not that chocolatey, put two in. But I think four is just the perfect quantity because it just makes it just nice and cacao-y. And what else have we got on here? We've got a pinch of salt and some vanilla. I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to vanilla. I choose to use the vanilla pods, which are already into a invert sugar um, syrup. So this is just one teaspoon of this is roughly a, a whole pod. Sorry, that's the sound of my Thermomix finishing. So I'm putting in about a half a teaspoon of vanilla in there. A little pinch of salt. I choose to use for Australians on the call and for other um, people, Americans perhaps on the call. You can get good sourced pink salt. I usually use Himalayan or um, Murray River pink salt. Just make sure it's coming from a hygienic, you know, hygienic place. And I don't want to miss out on the last but not least, our beautiful tangerine oil. Beautiful tangerine. It's not used a lot, so this is why I like to showcase some different um, oils. I'm going to put I've said four in the recipe, but I'm going to put six in. A little tip that okay. I always... Yeah, Donna? Can just ask you a question? Someone's just asking, is the coconut butter in the book? And I can't remember because I just know how to make it. So is it actually... Do you describe it in one of the recipes? I, I think I, I do in one of the recipes. I do. I do. But it, it's honestly so simple. It's like just one cup or two cups and just whiz it until you think nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden it does happen. That's like, right. What All right, I might leave it. Can I get you to do a little bit of a, your magic period now, darling? Because I'm going to use the beaters and I'm gonna, it's going to be noisy. So maybe mute me and then over to you, my darling. Yes. 
Courtney, can you handle the muting? I just want to share some magic with you. Not only does this book have all of the recipes, we also have the differences between some of the food, superfoods highlighted in it and the sweet stuff. Because I know that's a topic of contention for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people get really confused about this, so I'll touch on that. And then we have lots on nuts and seeds. So, and some of the unusual ingredients like Damiana. Okay, so <clears throat> the superfoods I'll leave you to read, but I'll go through a little bit on that. I want to cover the sweet stuff. So as long as you're using whole foods, so whole sweeteners, these are actually bioavailable to the body. Our body can use them and nourish them. And this is actually bringing that element of heaven on earth, heaven to us. So where the superfoods, many of them say, say like turmeric, let's take turmeric will be grounding and supportive of us for our internal structure, internal systems. He's working with robust wellness. We're working with bringing that beam of light to us from the inside. We're radiating that outwards. So the turmeric root itself is doing this, right, the rhizome, as well as the essential oil, right? So this is like, you know, light of the divine and it just emanates out of us. So you can imagine what that's doing to our cells, to our skin, to our entire being. Remember that the superfoods are working not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, just like our essential oils that come from these sacred and holy plants. So back to the whole sweetness where you have certain of these superfoods working with grounding you and bringing you here to earth and all of that divinity here to earth, that sweetness is bringing that aspect to us that craves and yearns that closeness to the heavenly realms, which is the sweetness. That's that choir of angels that just opens and sings, right? So just use that analogy. So a little bit of sweetness will actually enhance what you're doing and will also help you to stop craving processed sugars. Interesting, right? So if you just have a little bit of sweetness coming through, which matches really beautifully against the bitterness of the cacao. Cacao is naturally very bitter. So you have the cacao, this beautiful cacao pod, right? And when you open this, this cacao pod, you have within it this beautiful, white, fleshy yumminess. And you can actually eat that flesh. And when you open and get past that part, you have the cacao beans. And when you open the beans, you have the cacao nibs. And this is the original chop chip. They're bitter, they're not sweet at all. You can leave the cacao nibs as they are to bring that chop chip type crunch to your bliss balls. Like John has this beautiful recipe in there of three wise men. And you might want to roll them in the cacao nibs or add some cacao nibs and, you know, some bee pollen, another amazing superfood that's complete protein, or roll them in the bee pollen, right? So you can start to, as you become more familiar with and deepen in your relationship with these amazing foods from Mama Gaia, you'll start to feel where you want to bring them in, right? So we have the cacao that's beautiful and bitter. We have these whole sweetness. So... Um, whole sweeteners that we really focus on in this book are maple syrup, honey. There is a vegan honey, by the way. John and I aren't fans to use in raw work. Um, rice malt sugar, that is really good for a finish on something like a whole, whole made, a homemade granola, okay? It's not something I like to use in raw work. I barely use um, rice malt sugar, actually. Rice malt syrup is what it is, it's the, the sugar made into a syrup. Um, okay, now let me touch on false sweeteners that just bring so much joy to your life. We have vanilla and we have cinnamon, okay? And they feature a lot in this book. So vanilla, we have the vanilla pod of the hundreds and hundreds of orchids out there in the world. Just one produces the sacred vanilla bean. So you take that vanilla bean and you can slice it gently down the middle and open it up and scrape out the seeds and use those in your recipe. Otherwise, you can buy pre-made vanilla powder. Um, or try, just be careful when you're using essences because they often have a fair bit of alcohol. They're suspended in alcohol, right? Because the vanilla is highly viscous. You can't just make um, essential oil from it. It's an absolute. 
um because it it just all coagulates as you're making it it'll all go really gluey so it does need a bit of alcohol to disperse it so just take care when you're when you're choosing which vanilla you like vanilla paste is a really good option as well okay if there are any questions pop them in the chat so in terms of honey um, I've been vegan most of my life. The only reason I'm not full-blown vegan anymore is because of honey. So I'll use it for medicinal purposes, taking out splinters, using it to soothe a sore throat, you know, with my essential oils. I'll put some Hawaiian sandalwood on it and a little bit of honey and down the hatch. Um, I also use it for wound work, that kind of thing. Um, with honey, I really like to make sure I know the source. So beautiful Erin has their own honeys uh their own bees sorry and create their own honey and that's actually what we're looking to do on our land and not everyone can do that but there'll be local beekeepers you can connect with and ask how they look after them right so nuts and seeds and fruits so a little footnote here john and i use organic ingredients or biodynamic ingredients um we grow a lot of stuff ourselves we do our own sprouting as much as we can um but things like nuts and seeds are difficult to come by in really good quality. So you want to make sure they're organic or they're properly dehydrated, not sulfur dried, because that's not something you want to put in your system. Um, you can dehydrate fruits yourselves. With nuts and seeds, they need to be kept in the fridge or the freezer, if that's easier for you. Um, I would highly recommend soaking all of your nuts and seeds, or well, most of them, actually. Um, this book will explain that to you. But what happens is, is Mother Nature is super clever and she places them in their shell or their, and their husk, right? So what happens is, is if you're having almonds, let's say, without um, activating them, it's very difficult for our body to digest and to work with. So you kind of may as well flush that money down the toilet that you've just spent on that half a kilo of organic almonds. So what you do is you soak them and you'll see, um, depending on the quality of your nuts, you might see the water turn murky. That's the resins being released, sometimes just even the dust coming off them. Uh, you soak them and what you're doing is you're tricking them into sprouting. You'll see the nuts, any of the nuts you use, start to open up. And, and how it looks like they open up is they just start to swell up. They just start to swell up. And what they're doing is they're releasing the enzyme inhibitors. So enzymes are essential for digestion, right? So they're releasing these enzyme inhibitors, the very enzymes that stop us from digesting, using, assimilating them. And then what you can do is you can drain off the water, give them a good rinse, and sprinkle them in some salt, like lay them on trays for your dehydrator. You can sprinkle them with some salt, um, either before you lay them on the trays and mix that in or just lay them on the trays, sprinkle salt and then pop them in the dehydrator. A couple of things to cover on this with your nuts and seeds you're doing this. There are different soaking times for different nuts and you can just Google that. You can just Google and, and go to a reliable source. Um, almonds I always soak overnight. Um, I'll soak them around 12 to 12 to 18 hours really, so around 12 to 14. Um, and I love to sprinkle them in salt. You dehydrate them until they're fully dry and you'll feel the crunch kind of come back in them again. You don't want to under dehydrate. If you miss it, they can turn moldy. They'll go rancid. Why we keep them in the fridge or the freezer, John, I can see you're ready. I'll just finish this gorgeous. Yeah, is right, because they go rancid really quickly. Um, they have precious fats in there. That you want to maintain, you want to keep them whole and totally beneficial for you to use. The um, nuts and seeds, when you keep them in the fridge, you will actually taste the difference in them. Most of the store-bought nuts and seeds that you get that are generic and not organic or not kept in the fridge or proper um, insulation, they'll be rancid before you even get them home. They're rancid on the shelf. Okay, go for it, John. Yeah, totally, fully, could not agree anymore. <laughs> uh, I really love activating nuts, especially almonds. You just you just taste the difference. It's, it's incredible. So, so beautiful. All right. Can we pin back to me? Is that possible? Because I've got something to show you here. Because I've got Vanessa. I can see Vanessa, but I'm not sure if I'm pinned for everyone else. I can see you. Oh, yeah. You're oh, there you go. I just had a thumbs up in the background. So I've done a couple of things in the background that were a little noisy. So thank you, Vanessa, for um, giving us that deeper education on a lot of the, the ingredients that we both use and love and, you know, choose to use. 
So I've whipped up the, um, the coconut cream and like I said, it's like magic. It does go like cream. So you can sort of see there, it is really thickened. The salt helps to thicken it. It's quite a magic experience, but in the refrigerator, it does it a whole lot more like you saw before. So all I have here is two little dishes. This will probably do four. It's, it's, a, it's a dessert that is, it can be a little bit rich, you know, because of the coconut cream. If you're not used to eating a half a tin of coconut cream, then I'd probably put this into four dishes. So it's enough probably, you know, for a, a smidgen, for a nice dessert. But I would probably just, you know, put them into um, a, a few for, for guests, for a dinner party, whatever. And I'm just going to scoop them in here in front of you. And I mean, I don't have to do this all, but it just gives you the idea. And then you chuck them in the fridge. Um, like I mentioned, or like you saw before. So there you go, both done. But they're quite runny, they will set in the fridge. So when they're done, I kind of chop up maybe some um, cacao nibs or some almonds or some peanuts and just sprinkle that over the top. Or you can put some fruit like, you know, raspberries or blueberries, whatever you choose. But it is seriously delicious. So that is one of the most simplest, easiest recipes that showcases tangerine. You don't have tangerine, you can use grapefruit or orange or lemon, anything works. The citrus really work, really lifts it up. So something else I did while we, um, while I was making a bit of noise, you remember earlier I put on a cup of cacao butter and also the coconut oil. I got those two things liquefied. They were melting while, you know, while we were talking. And I've now added in a cup of um, cacao powder. I've also put in my maple syrup in there and I've also put in the cardamom oil and also the uh, pinch of salt. So what I've done yesterday is I pre-roasted some nuts. So you can use whichever nuts you like. So I've, I've chosen um, today, I've got something like almonds, I've got cashews, I've got Brazil nuts and I've got peanuts. But of course, if you have someone who's anaphylactic, you would skip the peanuts. This, came, this recipe came one day when I had an excess of nuts in the fridge and I went, I really love a roasted nut. There's something about the flavour and the taste of a crunchy, yummy nut. And then I thought, ooh, I could caramelise it with some honey or some maple syrup. And that was the clincher. And seriously, every event that I do, people say, can you make that cardamom nut slab, please? It's kind of become a bit of my signature thing because everyone just goes, <laughs> they just devour it. So that's been mixing. This is the Thermomix method. But I'm going to show you again exactly what I've done here for the fennel and sea salt in a little bit um, here. And I'll show you how to do that with steam in the double boiler bain marie method. But Vanessa, if I could just get you to talk maybe for another two minutes or so, I'm going to go over to the fry pan. I've just put the nuts in on a low heat and I'm going to add about five or six tablespoons of honey. It's something I cannot leave because it will scorch. But as soon as I come over with it, I'm going to pour it onto a tray that I've got pre-made right there. And this cardamom chocolate is all ready to go. So I can just all over the top. So it's, it's pretty, um, pretty impressive. So over to you, love, and I'll just be there putting um, the honey onto the roasting nuts. So thank you. Gotcha. Okay, honey. Courtney, if you just mute him. Okay, my loves. So there is a question of, um, you know, what if, I don't have a certain oil that goes in these recipes or what if I don't like that particular essential oil and they're really valid questions. So you can just, okay, look at what the recipe is and feel what would be yummy for you. So that mousse, for instance, tangerine mousse, one of the questions was, could we use something else? Absolutely, like play with the spices. Cardamom is a beautiful melody in there. You could use other citruses. I don't know if it's just, you don't like citruses in your food or um, just tangerine itself, or maybe you don't have it. You could look at combining, um, if you do like the tangerine, for instance, tangerine and cardamom or cinnamon bark, for instance, or a wild orange and, and cardamom is a beautiful mix. So I wanna just um, plunge in now while John's doing this yumminess with the nuts and talk a little bit on the essential oils for you. So cassia and cinnamon bark, they are both related. If you think of cassia as cinnamon's relative cousin, right? So in the store, when you go to purchase your cinnamon, often they'll sell it as a quill. They'll say cinnamon, um, they'll say the cinnamon quill is the cinnamon. Actually, that's the cassia. The cinnamon is the bark, the shards that you find in the store. 
so the cinnamon and the cassia will do different things in your recipe you can use both and then you can add something like a seed to it like a fennel or a cardamom and or a citrus to it so i'd like to bring you into the art of blending for food what are the layers that i want to bring in what fun do i want to have with this where do i feel i need support so for someone for instance who's journeying deeply with opening their heart again warming themselves from the inside out allowing themselves to say yes to the invitation of de-armoring right of dissolving of becoming less frigid less cold to the realms of love right because we all have our journey with that we all have our experience with that then you can actually turn to the barks, the cinnamon and or the cassia to assist with this. So imagine in this beautiful bowl of goodness of your chocolate mousse that there's this little hint of cassia. Cassia has this velvet touch, this sweetness to it, right? And cinnamon bark, though still sweet, as I said earlier, you know, cinnamon in its natural form is this, you know, natural sweetener, right? A false sweetener, what we'd call but it doesn't have the same depth and breadth of cassia, right? Cassia goes really deep, like this velvet caress, and cinnamon you'll just feel on your palate in a different way, right? It's more of a, a zap on the palate. Are you ready now, John? Just give me a nod. Yeah, let's let's show this. Hang on, we need to unmute John, Courtney, so we. I'm versatile. I can do hold a pan and unmute myself at the same time. Can we all see that? Right? How delectable, delicious does that look? You're all going, oh. So what I'm going to do is, this is a bit of a getting quick exercise. Like I said, I've got a tray here ready with um, you know, the parchment paper on it, the greaseproof paper. You can also do this in a Tupperware dish. It's okay, but as long as um, it's, a, it's a silicon one and it's going to come out, because if it's not going to come out, you've got problems. So this is the trick. Because we've applied a sweetener in here and it's kind of gone honeyed, right? It's kind of got, it's more or less gone caramelized. You've got to act pretty quick on this in spreading it around, okay? Because it can stuck, it can kind of stick where you put it. <laughs> so this is the art of kind of like, you know, spreading it around fairly quickly at the same time of not burning your fingers because it's really hot. But, you know, trying to, trying to fill the tray as best you can um, with the time that you've got. You've literally got about under a minute before it gets a bit, a bit difficult to work with. So that's looking pretty good. Oh, seriously, you should smell this. It is just so, so good. I never get tired of making this one. And it's something that you can make too to really wow your guests if you have a, a dinner party or even if you've got a family to feed that wants a wholesome treat, rather than you know, snacking on empty foods, um, you've got all the fats from the nuts, you've got the sweetening from the honey, you've got the cardamom, you've got the benefits of the cacao. I also snuck in some maca in there as well when you weren't looking. Maca is probably one of my most used superfood powders. It's, um, it's a root from South America, again, my love affair for South America. You think I was born there, I've actually never been there, but I want to go there. It's just full of so much magic, the Amazon. It really attracts me. Um, so maca is a root from the radish family, actually. And it's really good at balancing hormones. It's a really good source of fiber. It's an um, aphrodisiac as well for men and for women. It's just got a whole lot of good properties. So it's M-A-C-A. -A. There's various forms you can buy of maca. I just buy the powdered um, version. It's not fermented. I think it's fermented, the other version. I'm not too sure. But the one that I buy is just, it's very good for immunity. It's good for um, hormone support. It's good for a whole lot of things. So that is, I can't tip it too much forward, but that's a rough, you know, <laughs> a rough spread out over the tray. And this is, so, this is how you do it. This is it, right? Here's the chocolate. This is the aha moment. I'm literally just going to pour this beautiful cardamom chocolate as evenly, not evenly, in strips along where I've put these nuts down, and then I come back in and fill in the gaps. That's as simple as it is. And when you, like you saw the picture at the beginning when I, um, when I first made this, when you see and taste and feel it, it's, it's almost like a whole experience, this, this slab. 
um, because of the flavors, because of the crunch, because of the textures, and just because of the, um, you know that you're eating something that's good for you rather than empty and you know, feeling like you're eating a, an empty food. So that is simply it for the nut slice. I'm just going to put this over to the side over here because I can go straight into showing you how to do chocolate in the old style method of bain marie. And this leads into my other recipe, which is fennel and sea salt. When I first developed this recipe, I didn't really know how fennel would kind of taste. It was more like a bit of an experiment, really. I was just thinking, well, Fennel usually is something that you'd have when you traditionally have a bit of an upset stomach or something, or you have it in Indian um, food with the fennel seeds or with the bread, but it's something I thought maybe this can work with, um, with cacao. You know, maybe I can try that. So uh, this is again, probably one of my second most requested recipes. It's just very complex. You've got the roasted sesame seeds, which give a whole unique flavor on them on their own. The sweetness of the fennel, that like, um, Vanessa mentioned before, a, a, a false sweetener. I think fennel is also, a, it's, it's got its own sweetness as well. It's quite, quite beautiful and quite unique. Then I put in about half a teaspoon of um, sea salt because it's almost like a bit like a salted chocolate. So you've got roasted sesame, you've got your fennel notes there, you've got your salty notes, and then you've got the sweetness with the maple as well. So it's, it's quite a unique unique recipe. So I'm just going to turn to that, which is just on page 83. I don't know all my recipes off by heart. I still have to follow, you know. I'm a bit like Vanessa in my chocolate making. We have to write our recipes down, otherwise we sort of go, oh, yeah, I think I had that in it, and I think I had that in it, and we end up going, hmm, actually, I'm not too sure. Oh, yeah, it's got that in it. So I'm a bit famous for, for doing that myself. So... This is the bit where if you don't have a Thermomix, this is the easiest, oldest method possible. This little thing here that I've got is actually a thermo server. It's a, um, it's a Thermomix contraption. I'm hoping it's going to be warm enough to melt it. It feels fairly warm. Um, but you're going to be putting in your chocolate in here, your cacao butter, should I say. Actually, that doesn't feel very warm. Eek! <laughs> I might have to boil the kettle and try again. Um, you want to have this steaming and going, so it's going to be melting it in the glass bowl in front of your eyes. It's kind of melting and melting and melting. So what I might do actually quickly is to put the kettle on again. So Vanessa, over to you for a second while I do this. Sorry, I thought it would be hard. <laughs> I, I just messaged Noel, no, go boil the kettle. Okay, so um, you can use any bowl, it doesn't have to be a thermoserver. It's just that idea of the double boiling. So let me come back to a little bit of um, essential oil magic. So fennel is in the seed family and in our book that Adam Barley and I wrote, which is just there, The Gifts of Essential Oils, I know a lot of you have it, but we have divided them into the elements, all of the plants, and seeds fall into what we call akasha. And akasha is the realm of spirit. When we work with the seeds, so fennel, coriander seed, um, cardamom, we're working with the seeds of pure potential. So when we're creating with cacao, I, I just so invite you to create an intention. What is it that you want to immerse into? It could be prayer, it could be a mantra, it could be just a sacred devotion that resonates with you as you create whatever magic you're creating with cacao. So raw chocolate, for instance, I love to just sometimes tone or I'll just sing a prayer into it and let my heart just blossom with my intentions. The seeds, if you imagine, it's like you're planting the seeds of potential into that infinite realm of possibilities where the divine just scoops them up and breathes life into them and aligns with your heart's desire and your intention from your mind and helps to birth them alongside you into reality. So that actually is the power of working with seed. Yeah. If there are any questions, please ask. This recipe with fennel, go for it, do it. Um, I was saying earlier, it's like this juxtaposition between heaven and earth and the seeds of potentiality. You can also play with um, the cardamom and the bark in here. You can do whatever you like. 
but I, I will just say if you just try the fennel in here I think you'll be pleasantly delighted I know a lot of people say oh I don't like it I don't like that NSCD flavor it just works in here with that balance of sweetness and the cacao and the salt it works beautifully and not to mention those toasted sesame seeds okay any questions you guys that you want to drop into the chat while John is warming the water for the double boiler just pop them in the chat if you have anything okay so as you make raw chocolate you're going to discover that this base for raw chocolate it's in the book you can add any essential oils superfoods to them whichever whole sweetener that you choose um, and you can just use it as a base and put them in molds if you want to or you can do it as a slab right so this um this chocolate recipe is actually based for a lot of things you can also use it to drizzle over beautiful fresh fruits you know for those of you that are changing into the warmer seasons and as your berries start to come in um, or winter berries for those that aren't you can actually just place them you know on a tray and pour the chocolate in put it in the fridge and the chocolate will set crispy over that you can also just have it running and have it like a fondue so just slightly warm it up do all the recipes in the book incorporate essential oils yes yes they do they have some beautiful essential oils playing in them and if you'd rather not put the essential oils with them sarah is that what you're saying then you don't have to you don't have to they'll still be utterly divine so with the essential oils i just want to say this when you bind essential oils to a fat you are actually enabling them to enter your system safely, right? So you're bringing in that plant medicine in a really powerful way. I've been teaching aromatherapy for over 20 years. We're getting on to 25 years now. Um, I'm just revisiting studying my clinical aromatherapy degree. And I have to tell you that you can, you know, you can trust these doTERRA essential oils. You can trust where they're sourced and you can trust how pristine they are. I've never worked with anything more pristine in my life than these doTERRA essential oils. And when you bind them to a fat, like those nuts that I suggested you activate, you're increasing their bioavailability. They're going to dance around your body. They're going to weave their magic. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarah, awesome. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, there is a beautiful recipe in there for a cacao elixir. Here's John. He's got it ready for a cacao elixir. And that is one that we want to invite you to really get playful with. Like use different essential oils. Play with your vetiver in chocolate and in your elixir. Get your turmeric out. There's so much goodness that you can play with. And if you follow John um, on Instagram and Facebook, it's Shanti Star. I'll type it in in a moment. Um, and I'm Food Alchemy, and we give away loads of free recipes and videos and YouTube all the time. Take it away, John. Hello. Now, what's that? Um, what's that saying? A watch pot never boils. It was just like, ah, I I tried this yesterday, and it melted beautifully. But obviously, the the thermo maybe it's a bit colder today. It didn't hold the water, but I've just boiled the kettle, and actually Noel helped out and boiled the kettle. And it's going to make this bowl nice and warm and it's already beginning to melt in front of my eyes now. So this is the Bain-Marie method. You probably really should be having this on the heat while you are doing this, but you know, you'll be seeing my back. It will still melt or I may, you know, still need to duck over there and melt it again. But it's just pr practically making the steam from the water go up into the middle bowl or the glass bowl and you just whisk it until it comes all together, until it becomes, you know, liquefied. So this method has been, you know, it's probably one of the earliest known um, French methods of chocolate making, the chocolatiers and you know, using couverture and that sort of method. It just takes a little bit longer, but it does all come together in the end. So I'm going to add the coconut oil to this as well. And I may actually need to go over there and do it have a bit of a rapid boiling while I'm doing it. So we've got a half a cup of cacao butter, about a, half, a third a cup of um, the yummy coconut oil as well, just so it's going to do its melting. It's just, this is a perfect example of how chocolate is like a chemistry experiment. It's happened so many times to me before. If it's really hot, chocolate behaves differently. If it's a little bit cooler, it behaves differently. 
And this is the perfect example of that because it is quite a cold morning here in Western Australia. I think it got down to like seven, six or seven degrees. Our kitchen is still a little bit chilly. So it's, um, yeah, it's life. It's real life, isn't it? <laughs> so what you can see, I don't know if you can see that coming together now, it's actually melting quite nicely. It just, like I say, it does take that a little bit longer because it's the old school method. But you know what? I teach this method still in my classes because sometimes I do believe, as much as I love the Thermomix, <clears throat> excuse me, I do believe that I like to see the chocolate behaving in front of my eyes and see how it changes. You know, like you can sort of see as it's melting and as you add the powder and you can sort of see it coming into a batter and you, you, you more or less can see it changing in front of your eyes. With the Thermomix, again, as much as I love it, it, it is a little bit of a lazy way of making chocolate because it takes out that, for me, it takes out the physicality of watching it doing its thing, melting it, watching it change before your eyes into this glossy kind of batter, you know? But, you know, I still want to show you because not everyone has a Thermomix as well. So it's doing its thing, just a little bit slower. So these two must be in a melted state for this recipe to work, okay? You can't just chuck everything in together. You can't put the cacao butter and the coconut oil, the powder, the sweetener. It will look like a dog's breakfast. So it's, it's more or less waiting for the fats to become liquefied. And then you add all the things in as well. And there's another recipe that I talk about in my book. It's called, have you all ever heard of a ganache before? And I don't mean ganache, the Indian... Uh, God who takes away obstacles. This is, this is ganache. It's more or less a icing, like probably our mums and grandmas used to make with um, butter. So I swap out the butter for coconut oil, of course, and I use cacao powder and I put, sometimes I put in, um, if you're sneaky, I put a bit of limoncello in there, or I can put a bit of other liqueur in there for like this beautiful, it's like a frosting. It's a vegan style frosting. And I'll add the um, maple syrup to that as well. I'll add a few things into that, um, maybe superfood powders. But it's a really nice frosting. I heard Vanessa say before too, that the basic chocolate recipe that's in my book, you can drizzle that over ice cream as well. Same with this ganache. Once you make it, it's like an icing. You can put a blob of that over your ice cream and it sets like, we call it nice magic. We don't say ice magic, we say nice magic. Because that ice magic stuff, that's nasty. That's got some um, not good things in there. We're almost there. I tell you, this is a meditation. You're feeling calm and peaceful. <laughs> We've got about two it's little ones. It's a good time for you to sing, John. Hey? It's a good time for you to sing. I always make yeah. John sing when we do classes. I'm not going to make him now. But I will no. tell you, he is a beautiful Gee. singer. And often, remember I was saying just breathing your intentions in. And it doesn't matter whether you feel you have a beautiful voice or not. Sometimes it's just gorgeous to actually mm -hmm. sing something you love into whatever you're creating, whether that's a pot of soup or a beautiful chocolate or a ganache. It's really beautiful. It's just part of that daily devotion. Like let this become a devotion, a ritual, something that helps you come home to love. Exactly. It kind of imbues it, doesn't it? We do that every time. Vanessa and I do that. We use, um, we, add, we choose mantras. We like um, holy mantras that we sing into our food. But whatever, pray, sing, tune tone whatever you choose but it's true food has vibration and putting your good vibrations into it just makes it all, all the more yummy so now i'm putting a half a cup of beloved cacao powder in here i'm just going to chuck it all in together my li my liquids um so, sorry my solids have liquefied chuck that in there i have put in a quarter of a cup of maple syrup i'm going to talk a bit on maple now here's the brand if you're in australia it's called honest to goodness I choose to source always organic, 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 organic. And the reason I choose organic is because there's a lot of non-organic practices that aren't very um, sustainable and they, and they can actually still use, I'm not saying all, but some use uh, some chemical procedures in um, the trees when the trees are resting. Because, uh, you know, maples, um, they obviously have to tap the tree and then the stuff comes out of the tree, they collect it, and then when it's not producing that stuff, 
they need to tap it. So quite often um, there's some non-organic practices. So I always choose to use organic. It may cost a little bit better, uh, a bit more rather, but the taste is better, the quality is better, and you know that you know um, the, the organic. You know that there's going to be no nasties in there as well. But seriously, it you can taste the difference. And steer away, in my opinion, steer away from anything that says it's maple flavoured. Okay, flavourings usually are artificial sweeteners, a whole bunch of other stuff that you don't want to be putting in your body at all. So previously, I also roasted, I've chosen to use, I'm really in love with these black, um, can you all see those, black sesame seeds? This just means they're unholed. So they've still got the, the husk on them, they actually do have a few more health benefits than the, than the white ones. And, and I also just couldn't get the white ones, so I thought I'd try the black ones. No real difference in the taste, perhaps smidgen bitterness, but when you roast them, it doesn't change that at all. It actually makes it really quite a taste, a taste treat. In for my salt, how much have I said in my book here? I've got a half a teaspoon of pink salt. So this is what gives it that zing and that, that salty um, difference. So I'm putting that into there. And here's my good for fennel. I'm going to be putting in three drops of fennel. As I alluded to before, I think I got distracted by my um, stuff not melting, <laughs> was whenever you're adding, if you want to add oils to your food, again, like Vanessa said, it's your choice. You, you, don't, um, you don't have to, but rest assured that you know, the quality is really there with doTERRA and I'm totally okay with that, is don't be looking away, going, la 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 la, what was that, what was that? Because if you put something in that's, you know, cardamom, ginger, even fennel, if it's, um, it can be a little bit too overpowering because there's no going back if you put too much in. It, it's okay if you put a bit much extra citrus in, it's going to be very zingy and citrusy, but if you put extra, you know, cassia or you put in extra cinnamon or, um, you know, cardamom particularly, those ones are really quite, quite strong and you can't take it out. Once it's in there, you get triple the batch or something, I don't know. So realistically, guys, that's it. This is a very, very, very simple, um, simple recipe. I'm gonna put some lacuma in there as well. My recipe does say maca. However, I put the maca in the other one. So I'm gonna to choose to use lacuma in this one. So that's how you spell it. Lacuma, another wonder from South America. And it's full of fiber. I actually mention it in my book as well. It's got some minerals and vitamins that are really good for you as well. In, I believe, friends that have been there, very jealous, to Peru, um, they make an ice cream out of lacuma and it's supposed to be one of their delicacies. So I'm very much looking forward to going to Peru and trying the lacuma ice cream sometime. And it's a fruit, it's a beautiful, plump, yummy, orange, fleshy fruit that they, that they make the powder from. So. Again, it's just another diverse superfood. So once, once you get on the road like me for these wonderful superfoods and you start storing them in the fridge and you keep them in your pantry, I always actually say keep them in the fridge because they can oxid oxidize quite quickly, is that you've got this collection of things that you can go to and you go, hmm, what do I feel like having today? Maybe I'll make this and I might put that in it and I might pair it with this oil. And then maybe, uh, you know, I also put the stuff into smoothies and juices. I put a teaspoon of this in with my oils. And once you've got that collection of superfoods and that good stuff, it's, there's no going back because you've got them. You can call upon them, use them. And what you're doing is that you're actually boosting your diet with more superfood content than ever before. Antioxidants, you know, anti, anything anti that's what um, our beautiful superfoods provide us. You know, heaps of fiber, heaps of vitamins, heaps of lots, lots of goodness. So you're adding that to your normal foods is really boosting your superfood content. So for me, I love things like hemp seeds and hemp protein powder and chia seeds. And I mean, look, I mentioned all of these in the book. I can't even remember how many superfoods I think I call upon. Powders, I know 19, but the actual other additions, I think there's over 45 or something that I recommend and use. So get some superfoods into your pantry and into your fridge, y'all. You won't regret it. So here you go. This is what I was talking about before. This is one of those cool little um, Tupperware free forms, they call them. A good sign of a silicon is if, if you do this to it, you can't see it turning white. It means it's a good quality of silicon. 
So generally that means that no harmful toxins or chemicals are gonna leach out into your food. So if you know someone that does Tupperware, or if you know someone that does a really good quality of silicon, these things I use so much and they're just brilliant. They're so easy, you don't have to line them, you just pour them all in. So this is it. A little trick as well. Notice that I'm wiping the bowl here, right? I don't want to get any water whatsoever because there was quite a bit of condensation steam underneath here, okay? I don't want to get any water into the chocolate because chocolate and water don't mix together. They do weird things. They kind of separate and it can sometimes throw off the whole batch. So don't, don't be putting any um, water in your chocolate if you can help it. And look, you can make this recipe as thin or as thick as you like. The reason for that is in the book, I've chosen to call it a bark. Okay, so this is something that you can cut into small triangles when it's set and you can put on your ice cream or you can have it as a little, um, do you all remember those after dinner mints? It's kind of like funny little um, peppermint after dinner mints. This is kind of like my after dinner sesame salt fennel mints. No. Um, so you can have it as thick or thin as you like, but I've chosen to have it about this much. So. That is simply it. So hopefully I've inspired you to get that double boiler happening because that is so, so simple. And I'm going to move on to my last recipe, which is banana ice cream. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm not, I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian. I do live a healthy um, diet, I, like I say. Oh, hello, putty cat, Stephanie. <laughs> um, <laughs> just sorry, cat, I love cats, just hello. Um, I, I do like to get as many superfoods into my into my body and into my diet as possible. But I still, if like as you, probably a lot of people who follow me or follow us on our page, we do usually spend six months of the year in Italy. So gelati is one of my favourite after dinner um, things. So I do still indulge in some nice, you know, ice creams every now and then. But if it's something at home and we don't have a beautiful gelateria to go walking to, because um, there's not, not a lot in our area, I came up with this recipe to give people some um, inspiration to have a dairy-free ice cream. And I thought, how, how would bananas, I don't know how it would come across, but believe me, it, it comes across really beautiful. It tastes, you would not believe it's actually a dairy-free um, ice cream at all. And it's really, really simple. So I'm just gonna turn to the recipe as well. It is on, page 63 and I'll show you how easy it is and this is obviously demonstrating the so there you go. that's the nice magic I was talking about before that you put over the top basic chocolate recipe or ganache dribble it over the top of it and it sets like that and yes that is frozen bananas can you believe it so this is a really really simple recipe I choose to use um, peanut butter but again, if you have someone with anaphylaxis, use almond butter, cashew butter, macadamia butter. I mean, you could get really exorbitant with this if you wanted to. So I'm just going to get bananas out of the freezer, just right here. So usually you're looking at about um, uh, a good day putting them in the freezer. But if you're thinking of making this, I would probably be putting it, uh, give, them, give them a couple of days to really snap hard. Because if they're not going to be frozen, they tend to, yeah, just it just gets a bit messy. The, the alchemy of it has to be frozen for it to kind of smooch together. And then you're just pouring it into a container and then it's setting in the freezer. Take it out a little bit before you're going to serve it and it just scoops out like beautiful, normal ice cream. So I'm going to be putting in four frozen bananas. Excuse your ears. So whenever I freeze them, I snap them in half just kind of helps the Thermomix for not breaking it. So there's two, <laughs> three, and four. Now this will be another, um, another segue because it's going to be quite noisy. So I'll put everything in and then I'll give the thumbs up for Vanessa to chat about whatever floats her boat. <laughs> so peanut butter. I'm not really a fan of the Aussies watching. I'm not really a fan of craft peanut butter. I've gone with the, um, this is Mavers, it's a Mavers brand. And it's a, you know, it's a no, added, uh, no added sugars, it's an all natural one. It's, it's, um, it's got a whole lot of other less nasty things than other store bought ones. So I choose to, to buy that one, probably one of the best ones that I like. And I'm gonna be putting in two heaped teaspoons. 
Like I said, if you don't want to use the peanut butter, that's fine. Just go for a, a different um, nut butter, but it certainly is incredible. Now, I will, I will say this to be very torturous and very cruel. I'm sorry for our American friends who are watching this. I did do a sneaky before. I said that I made um, cinnamon ice cream, but because I've already pre-made some stuff to show you how it turns out, I didn't want to have two batches of cinnamon, so I made lemon myrtle peanut butter banana ice cream. So we can get lemon myrtle. I can see Vanessa's face. She's going, <laughs> honest to God, unbelievable. So if you can get lemon myrtle, put lemon myrtle in. The recipe I've said, you know, choose cardamom, cinnamon, orange, lemon, whatever you've got on hand, whatever you want to play with. But because we just had lemon myrtle as a, um, an all-time item, uh, I just put two drops in. Freaking unbelievable. Next level. I've never tasted anything more delicious like that. So I was quite surprised. So I'm sorry for the um, for misleading you, setting up a cinnamon, but now it will be cinnamon. So do you remember the coconut cream that I um, used before? The, almost the whole tin. We're going to chuck that in. This is what helps bring it together. Okay, so this is sort of what is, it, it's a bit of the binding agent, but also it's what makes it go um, creamy as well. So yes, shock horror, I'm only putting in one tablespoon of cacao powder, believe it or not. But that's it. That's a tablespoon. AJC, everyone's, everyone that's... Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, they're all saying, those that live in Australia, so 10 a.m. at your place, John. Sharon's coming after work. They're all going to help you and not eat it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. There'll be a cover charge. <laughs> Oh, hey, yeah. This is what we call a mouthgasm. This is oh. utterly explosive, party in your mouth, flavours, everything is created divine. You're going to have so much fun making these. Thank you. <laughs> now that's about a half a teaspoon. So look, if you want a salted caramel kind of experience, this is pretty more. You can put a whole teaspoon in. I'm not a big salt eater, but when you're having a sweet, you know, this thing that we're making, I'm making, you're not going to eat the whole thing in one go unless you're you know, really famished, but you will feel quite ill <laughs> after it. But consider the salt content. You're having it per serve, you know, so it's not really going to be too bad. But it depends on how much salted flavour you want. So I've, I put in about a half a teaspoon of salt in there. Again, my friend Vanilla, putting that in. I'm just going to do a squirt roughly for a half a teaspoon there. And we've got the cacao powder, maple, coconut, peanut butter, and last but not least, our beautiful oil. Like I said, I'm using cinnamon. Here's our beautiful cinnamon, sourced from Indonesia. And I think I'm going to put in three drops. Because cinnamon is a nice flavour. And it just gives ice cream and cinnamon go really nicely together. Okay, I am going to whiz this. So over to you, Vanessa. I'm just going to, this will take a little bit, so I just need to whiz and scrape and whiz and scrape, but I'll, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, awesome. So this book has myriad examples of how you can work with cacao, but I really just want to bring your attention to this because once you understand how to make raw chocolate, you can use that as a base, not only for raw chocolate molds or a bath, you can also do something like this with it. And these are his beautiful pistachio tahini cups. So you'll have the recipe in here for the chocolate around it, but also that beautiful filling with pistachio. Uh, that's, sorry, pistachio. Yes, I'm Italian, and there are some things I still just get used to saying the way we say it. Then there's another one, which is a triple-layered ginger and lime caramel slice. So just to understand that something like maca brings this natural caramelly flavour, right? Kamu Kamu has a citrusy type flavor and really great with vitamin C and support during winter. So they're all going to bring different flavors. So for something like when you want a vegan caramel, you would turn to maca and you could combine them with a really dense nut, um, a really meaty kind of nut. So like a Brazil and walnut combined or just walnut, for instance. Um, I think John uses walnut. walnut. He uses in this and tahini. So what you're doing with this one is the triple layer ginger and lime caramel slice has a base, has the middle, and then has the top, which is like a ganache. Or you could pour chocolate over the top, right, and just let it crack as you cut into it. The base 
and the bliss balls. Let's turn to that now because there's some beautiful bliss ball recipes in here as well. So bliss balls, once you nail them and you know how to make them quite well, they will double up. Not only is these wholesome little treats in the refrigerator that you can just go and pluck and eat and yummy, you can actually use them as bases for raw cakes and tarts and um, raw muesli or raw cookies. Now, cookies and mueslis can actually be used in the dehydrator if you want it to have more of a texture, you know, a soft, chewy kind of cookie texture. They're not going to have the snap of cookies. Um, it's totally different, but they are succulent. They're really beautiful. And what you can do is you can even take a bliss ball. And then do you remember those thumbprint biscuits? that we used to, I don't know if, if you guys had them, but they used to be around and people would make cookies and you'd put your thumb in it and then fill it with jam, something like that. So my mom they used to put whatever homemade jam she had in it. Often we have beautiful fig jams because we had an abundance of figs. And then that would go in the oven and roast up. So what you can do is take your bliss balls and put your thumb in it. And there's a couple of things you can do. One is you can put ganache on it. Actually, John has a recipe for that. You can put nuts in on the top. You can put um, seeds sprinkled in it. You can put bee pollen. So you can do lots of different things. Bee pollen, just to let you know, you'll hear us talk about this. It's a complete protein. It's a fabulous addition to bring into your world and your realm of rocking. I wouldn't cook it though. I wouldn't cook it. You just add it later. So it's great in raw granolas. Um, muesli bars that you make, which, of course, they're not with oats or anything. We're talking beautiful, wholesome um, muesli bars, which are with activated nuts and seeds and organic dried fruits and, you know, maybe some cacao nibs in there and hemp seeds and bee pollen. That's where that would come in, yeah? And then you just set it in the fridge. You'd have, like, some cacao butter and coconut oil in there and you set it in the fridge and, whew, Divine. You ready, John? Let me mute and you can talk gorgeous. There you go. Getting my morning workout too, leading across the bench. Now, a, little, a few little um, hints and tips with your banana, your, um, with whizzing up your banana. Seriously, I'm not a, I'm not a Thermomix salesman at all. I'm too busy with whatever I, with what I do with doTERRA. But if you are willing and thinking of getting a Thermomix, these things will change your life. I mean, the model I've got is eight years old and it's still going strong. I've got the TM31 version. So there are two more versions on top of this, three, I think even. But you will hear it, right? Because these are so super powerful. So even if you don't have one, get one. But if you don't have one and you have a very, very, you know, powerful uh, double blade food processor, you'll hear it doing its thing, okay? So it would be struggling because there's four frozen bananas on there. Bananas are actually quite hard when they're frozen. I think you could smash a window with them. They're actually very, very hard. So you've got to let the blades chop it all up. So it will go, it will struggle, it'll stop. It'll struggle, it'll, you know, so just be patient. You may not think it's going to do it. Roughly a minute. I've sort of been watching it and whizzing it. It's, a, it's approximately a minute. And then all of a sudden it just comes to like a beautiful, look at this. I don't know if you saw me stick my finger on it before, but I had a big dollop lick. It's like soft serve ice cream, right? You can serve this straight away if you wish. But for me, I like to, you know, put it into a container like here. I've got the you know, Tupperware container. You can just put that in. I won't do it all now, but I'll just show you. Just dollop it all in and then put it in the freezer for a little bit. It does set quite hard. It actually does go really, really quite hard. So my trick is that I'd probably only put it in for a short time, maybe an hour or so. And then if you're going to serve it, just leave it out until it gets a little bit more firmer than this. And it will set, it will, it will set like normal ice cream. So four recipes, oh, that's eight. Four recipes <laughs> done and dusted. I hope I inspired you. And if you have any questions, please, anyone pop them in the, the chat. I can actually look at the chat myself now too, because I can, I can um, have a breather now, but Look, this is what really, really excites me, and I'm hoping that my excitement and Vanessa's excitement has come over to you as well, in that don't be afraid to experiment with your foods. And don't be afraid to, you know, get a, get a few more superfoods into your diet, like I mentioned before. Go to, um, if you're in Australia, I really love lovingearth.net. 
So lovingearth.net for everything cacao and coconut products, and they've got a good selection of superfoods. I really love um, medicinal mushrooms, and I know Vanessa does as well. There's a wonderful company called Superfeast. They're in Manly in, uh, in Sydney. They're fantastic, best medicinal mushrooms I've ever come across. Another place I like to source from is um, when I'm in uh, Italy, that is, that they have, Amazon have a really good collection of organic and South American superfoods, um, cacao, coconut products, you know, your nuts and your seeds. It's a bit, bit more pricier than Australia. America as well, like I mentioned before, you've got also your Amazon, you've got your Whole Foods. But, you know, for me, I think it's all about supporting our local people as well. So if you can, if you can support a local health food store or get someone who you know that um, has a co-op and, and buy in with a few other people, like a bulk order, um, then you're, you're supporting a local business rather than a big, you know, giant like Amazon. Um, but, yeah, look, it's not that difficult to, to source this stuff. You just, just might take a little bit of researching in your area, but, you know, with the internet now and with everything being online, um, I do believe that Loving Earth has actually gone into Canada and into America. They, they mm. are... They're really, really good. Yeah. They have, and Super Feast, I've just written it there for you all as well. I actually contacted oh, him right. he's from Australia and um, he will ship to you guys as well. He's just looking at setting up in America. COVID yeah. happened and it kind of put the brakes on everything. Honeys, I hope you loved today. Isn't he amazing? Everyone, let's just tinkle him in love because that was <laughs> awesome. I just want to let you know, alas, I can't even go drop in and see John and Noel right now because I'm five hours away at our farmhouse in my cute little nest here. Yeah. I would like to just um, let you know that if it's really resonated with you and you'd love to go deeper with the essential oil aspect and the magic of the essential oils, um, my, my passion is to bring the voice of Mama Gaia into life. And this book here that you can see, <laughs> Gifts of the Essential Oils, I have co-authored with another soul brother, Adam Barrelay. And we've put together for you guys a special. Courtney, can you link them, honey? She will email you and she'll also send you Adam's email. So don't go to Oil Life to ask them questions. We're doing this independent of Oil Life. We just want to give all of you guys the gift of this. We've done it America Friendly Time. It's going to be at 8 a.m., and what we're doing is, is we're going to do a 10 week journey with you with the essential oils. I'm going to bring cacao and superfood magic in every week with recipes. We're giving you recipes. We're doing um, beautiful compliments to the plant kingdom in essential oils, crystals, cacao and whole food magic. And then the art and magic of blending and creating synergistic blends. So I hope that that is something that will delight you and open your hearts and have you sing with joy please make sure you go to oillife.com and receive this book this is fantastic the thing about this book is that whatever you make actually appears as it does here now i'm a really rustic chef i don't make things as pretty as my beautiful brother john does but i tell you what they taste as good they're still a mouthgasm all right, Courtney has just put the details for the course here. So basically, it's Essential Oil Practices for a Harmonious Life. It's a masterclass series. It's going to start the 22nd of June, um, and it's going to be starting around this time now. So the prices are all there for you all. When you bring a friend, we have, instead of it being $79 per person, we have an early bird for $59, or you plus three, is an early bird for $200, okay, honeys? So I hope that you find value in this. I create beautiful eBooks for every week for these class. So you're gonna be full of goodness um, with these eBooks. You guys, this is going to be the best investment for your heart, your soul, and your kitchen. He has created these recipes with so much love and so much intention. There is so much goodness in here. I mean, he hasn't forgotten to mention anything. This is a journey. It's a way of living. That's his beautiful husband, Noel there, his beloved. And together they are shantistar.com. Visit them often and much. They are probably one of the very few that I choose to follow because what they post is so soul-nourishing. 
so soul nourishing. I think we need to be really mindful who we follow and what we listen to and breathe out there right now, okay, during this amazing time of awakening and heart opening. May the wings of your heart unfurl. May you be blessed with the magic and majesty of cacao and the essential oils and all that Mother Gaia has to give us, gift us, and cocoon us in. John, thank you so much, brother. Thank you for taking your time to share these recipes and actually demonstrating them for us online during a time where we can't be all together right now. So thank you, Anol, for opening your home and hearts to us and letting well, us thank you for having me you. yeah thank you and lovely to connect with you all as well thank you like really really thank you it was um obviously you know the, the in-person thing like vanessa said COVID, it's changed a lot of things but it doesn't stop us from sharing with people and whether that's online i just wish you could send it all so everyone on the call gets a sample sent in the post it might not look like it was when i put it in the envelope but you're no i'm kidding um thank you for tuning in <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that you found inspiration and um, you go out and do these things because it's it's good for you and it's good for your family and good for your body. So Courtney from All Life is saying, let's do more. Who else wants more of these classes? We'll do more with John. Take more deep dives into the realm of superfoods and John's heart song here with Kikau. So we'll see you all next time. We love you guys so much. And yeah, have fun creating, go create, go make something now. You can get on their page and there'll be a recipe right now that you can follow until that book lands on your door. Certainly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye.